Welcome back to Fox and Friends. Fulton County DA Fannie Willis led the investigation resulting in Trump's mugshot. But now she'll be under the microscope. That's right. House Republicans on the Judiciary Committee begin their probe, alleging politics played a major role in her prosecution. Congressman Lance Gooden is a member of that committee. He joins us now. Congressman, thanks for being here. What can this really do? I mean, what, what's the committee looking for here? Well, just this week, uh, the committee led by Chairman Jim Jordan issued a letter uh, to the district attorney there in Atlanta asking for documents um, that uh, re reflect any correspondence or working with uh, Prosecutor Jack Smith or the executive branch in any way. They also want to know how federal funds that that office has received have been spent because what this investigation um, has has led us to believe is that it is politically motivated. Um, in the very long letter uh, that the district attorney received this week, uh, we referenced uh, some of the things that she references in her indictment, some of the things that she said furthered this criminal enterprise, such as Mark Meadows requesting the phone number of the Pennsylvania House Speaker. Very uh, common things that chiefs of staff to a president may do, ask for a phone number, things that have to do with federal duties uh, that really have no business in any kind of criminal prosecution. Uh, but these are things that she should have uh, should have been aware of when she decided to go down this path that there would be oversight of her prosecution and that's what we intend to do. So if you find I guess you could call it collusion between the DOJ or Jack Smith and um, and this DA then then what happens. Well I suspect we'll give her until September 7th that was the deadline on the letter. Um, I, I don't know if she will be willing to comply with that or not. We'll see what happens on the 7th. That's just a few weeks away. Uh, from there, uh, we can move to sub subpoenas. We can move to bringing witnesses in uh, before the committee and really uh, ramp up the oversight process. But I'll give her the benefit of the doubt until September the 7th with respect to getting us the very simple uh, documents that we've requested. But, but to that point, Congressman, what what does what is the end result of Congress's oversight of of a prosecutor in Georgia? Like, what can you do? Can you talk about well, the power of the know, purse? What, some, what is some of the some of the argument is that this has nothing to do with federal oversight, but there are very serious federal implications with this prosecution. Um, there are very serious questions about the motivations behind this. As you know, she uh, put up a website just a few days before coming out with this indictment, uh, bragging about going after President Trump. This investigation started back in uh, two years ago and she's waited until President Trump is back in the political race. She's requested a trial date for near Super Tuesday next March. And so there are so many questions uh, that people have that with respect to whether or not uh, this is political. But back to that question about what can Congress do when we have such federal implications uh, with respect to this, uh, with respect to a president worried about doing his job if a state court is going to come after him even after he leaves office. These are uh, this is what con congressional oversight is all about. And so as this uh, progresses, I think the end result will be um, much more information coming out that the American people can use to make very important decisions next year. That correspondence that you may that you're requesting of potential communications between Fannie Willis and Jack Smith, right, who's the special prosecutor. Would that by necessity be bad? It shouldn't sometimes prosecutors compare notes so that you're not double charging or something. I mean, or, or could it be that not communicating is bad? What's your takeaway? Well, I, I think the thinking is is that the the federal justice department is there uh, to go after federal crimes. And what is it that she's going after? If she's coordinating uh, with the feds, uh, then that's something that I think that needs to be made known. I think the political. Uh, the, the implications with respect to why uh, she's pursuing this, the fact that this fundraising is going off of this, the fact that the Fulton County uh, judge has already removed her from going after other state officials uh, because of her uh, political ties to, uh, I believe, the lieutenant governor there. Uh, why did they not have this problem with respect to President Trump and her very obvious political leanings? These are just uh, questions that I believe will come out in the coming months. I believe it's important that the American people know. And if this is all about justice, then I suspect that uh, the district attorney would have no problem with oversight and making sure this information comes out. Congressman, what's your message to Americans who are really frightened right now? Um, they're seeing uh, an opposition leader jailed like Latin American style or, or, or mugshotted and indicted and, and possibly having to run from jail um, if he becomes the nominee, which seems likely. Um, what's your message to them? Because they don't believe that this is just about Donald Trump. 
Um, most Americans, half the country, certainly con people who identify as conservatives, believe that this system is being weaponized against them. They're worried about being deplatformed. Um, they're seeing that happening to conservatives, uh, financially speaking, um, from banks. They're worried about, you know, being censored by big tech media companies. They're worried about th the government being weaponized against them. What is your message to them? Because truly, the Republicans in Congress are the only voice they have in this government. Well, first of all, elections matter. If it weren't for this very small uh, margin of, of lead that we had in the last cycle in the House, uh, where would we be today? What, what powers would we have? It's very terrifying. I filed a lawsuit against the county of Dallas in the last election cycle because they were cheating. I alleged that they were cheating. I had evidence that they were. And I'm waiting to, uh, to get indicted by Fannie Willis uh, for my actions. If, as an elected official, I cannot speak up when there is an injustice because of fear of prosecution, then what country do we live in? And I would say to the American people and to those who are, who are fearful of what they're seeing, uh, you've got to focus on the next election cycle. You've got to support uh, your members of Congress and know that we're doing all we can on the Republican side in the House. Um, but winning the next election and winning back the White House is critical. All right. All right. Congressman Gooden, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.